Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Meeplus and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'm going to be talking about A Dangerous Woman, a graphic biography of Emma Goldman with writing and art by Sharon Rudol, whose name I hope I pronounced correctly. Nothing with her saying her name came quickly to hand. I originally reviewed this when I was a fresh new baby booktuber in 2015 but I figured it was time to reread and re-review this really inspiring biography that turned me on to such an interesting leftist figure. A Dangerous Woman was published September 30th, 2007 by the New Press, and apparently also in at least Turkish in 2010. The only warning, besides extreme awesomeness, uh, is that there is some nudity. In case there was any doubt about it, Emma Goldman did have several sexual relationships, and this is dealt with in a very matter-of-fact way that does include some sexual scenes where people are clearly enjoying themselves. There's also two assassination attempts and one state-sanctioned execution. While I didn't know that much about the creator before setting out to make this review, Sharon Rudel is apparently also pretty coolio, according to Liebig and the Women in Comics wiki, Rudel was an early contributor to underground comics in the 1970s and part of the collective that started women's comics in 1972, which I haven't read. Uh, Rudel's work has appeared in Wet Satin, Dope Comics, Bizarre Sex, and Anarchy Comics. She also IDs as Jewish and, according to Lilith, was a homeschool parent. Flipping the book over, the official description is as follows. A wonderful retelling of the famous anarchist and radical icon Emma Goldman's extraordinary life. This graphic biography embodies the richness and drama of Goldman's story in a wholly original way. A dangerous woman depicts the full sweep of a life lived to the the hilt in the struggle for equality and justice. Emma Goldman was at the forefront of the radical causes of the 20th century, from leading hunger demonstrations during the Great Depression. Ask for work. If they don't give you work, ask for bread. If they do not give you work or bread, take the bread. To organizing a clothemaker's strike, from lecturing on how to use birth control to fighting conscription for World War I, her soulmate, Alexander Berkman, spent 14 years in jail for his failed assassination attempt against industrialist Henry Clay Frick. As I mentioned during the creator bio, Sharon Rudel was part of the underground comics movement, and that seems fitting to my untrained eye, just flipping through the art. It's certainly a bit word-heavy, something I often found daunting. Obviously, for this reread, my love of Emma Goldman made everything pretty easy to get through, but I feel like the page layout choices did help more than a little on my first read-through. Not a super easy to follow one-on-one sort of comic layout, I do feel like the dynamic framing and detailed drawings helped to give my ADHD brain details to flip to when my attention starts to wander. Gender, obviously, is something that comes up a lot in the book. Mostly implicitly, not so rah-rah women explicitly. And this gender and sexuality were key to how she was able to move through the world and the different kinds of obstacles she had to overcome. Her t- Critique of the suffragette movements are pretty interesting and important to know the context of in case some member of the manosphere ever tries to convince you that Emma was on their side. Some exciting examples of what she had to say on the subject of suffrage include The American suffrage movement has been, until very recently, altogether a parlor affair, absolutely detached from the economic needs of the people, and The poor, stupid, free American citizen Free to starve, free to tramp the highways of this great country, he enjoys universal suffrage, and by that right he has forged chains around his limbs. The reward that he receives is stringent labor laws, prohibiting the right of boycott, of picketing, of everything except the right to be robbed of the fruits of his labor. And to conclude, uh, few countries have produced more arrogant and snobbishness as America, particularly is this true of the American woman of the middle class. She not only considers herself the equal of men, but his superior, especially in her purity, goodness, and morality. Small wonder that the American suffragist claims for her vote the most miraculous powers. In her exalted conceit, she does not see how truly enslaved she is, Not so much by men as by her own silly notions and traditions. Suffrage can not ameliorate that sad fact. It can only accentuate it as indeed it does. Which I, and the few people I 
who I have talked to on the subject, perceive to be fairly run-of-the-mill anti-voting sentiment of an anarchist and a critique of presenting women as a class of more moral and pure voters. Emma's sexuality was also pretty interesting, apparently pretty straight. Her practice of free love was still pretty revolutionary, an outspoken critic of marriage. Goldman was apparently an early critic of what was now we now call homophobia, although the latter was highlighted more on her Wikipedia profile and not so much inside this particular graphic biography. She had several male lovers throughout her life with a, with at least one later in life being much younger. I felt like Rudel did a good job of differentiating each relationship and didn't just brush over it, this aspect of Goldman's life in any way. While not explicitly disability representation, I did also appreciate the way in which Riddle also highlighted the toll that Goldman's busy life had on her and others. There's at least once, if not twice, where Goldman becomes quite ill and must be nursed back to health by her sister. The imprisonment of a lover also has a deep and profound impact on both of them mentally and politically. It would be nice to see more, and I would not consider Goldman a disability icon, but there is something to say about pushing back against the idea that our heroes just go, go, go all the time and never need rest. Another implicit and not explicit idea you kind of have to think about on your own time, but race is also an important aspect of Emma Goldman's life. Emma Goldman is a Russian immigrant whose family fled from Russia due to anti-Semitism. Goldman faces barriers that she must creatively overcome because she's not a native English speaker. Doing some cursory web searching, nothing is coming up for Goldman and race. General perception is she was against racism, although the social media is saying she did have strong negative feelings about Lucy Parsons. Well, it's always nice to think of the people we admire as perfect. I'm really glad to have done this thought process about the way Goldman did or did not react to different marginalizations. Lots of questions to keep in mind whenever I work up the concentration to engage with her work again and inspiration for more holes of representation I need to look into, and she certainly is not necessary for everyone. Bye y'all, keep reading, and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and Anishinaabe people the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13, also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.